Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Like all my videos, we're going to jump right in. Today we're talking about some common problems with makeup. This video is in response to a comment that I got on a video. Here's what it says. I'm now 50 and have noticed eyeliner and mascara always smudge in my under eyes now. Concealer just makes the area creased and cakey. What should I do? Another comment was left. I have exactly the same problem. It drives me mad and nothing I do seems to prevent it. I'm 62 and my under eyes are a little puffy now, which I think makes it worse. So let's talk about this. The good news is this is a really common workable problem. We've got this covered. There are likely one of two reasons that this is happening. It usually has to do with what we're putting on the skin before makeup and then how we're putting the makeup on. So when things go really crazy with our skin or our makeup or both, I always say take it back to very basics. Wash your face, tone your face, apply a moisturizer, whether it's dry skin or oily skin, and then a sunscreen. Very simple. Take out your serums, take all your crazy layering of things out and just put them aside until we get the problem fixed. Then you can slowly try to add them back in and see if that will change things. If things are going crazy, I always recommend like Cetaphil or CeraVe. They have cleansers according to your skin type. So always go according to your skin type. Let's just focus on morning time. So in the morning, when you get up, the first thing you're going to do, I mean, maybe after coffee, <laughs> is wash your face. Use a gentle skin cleanser once, rinse with plenty of water, again, rinse with plenty of water, and then pat my face dry with a clean towel. Always use a brand new, fresh, clean towel. Always. And the reason for that is you don't want any bacteria getting on your face. If you are not good at keeping clean towels because you have other people that may use them on their whatever, um, I suggest something like these. These are biodegradable. They are super soft. One side has a little bit of a texture. So if you want to use it for exfoliating, you can. And the other side is completely smooth. I have really gotten addicted to these lately because I do have a teenager in the house, so no towel is safe. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You can use them wet. You can use them dry. I usually use mine and then wash it out and then use it for several different things for makeup. And they're super strong. So there's my little sales spiel on these things. So we're going to wash, pat your face dry, and then you're going to grab a toner. A toner does two major things. It's going to pick up a little bit more dirt that is left on your skin so it's going to give you that little extra cleanse and for me it's especially helpful in the nose area where I tend to get clogged up pores very easily and the toner is also going to restore the pH balance of your face. I like this one the Thayer's facial toner this one's got witch hazel but the important thing is that it's alcohol free. Once you've toned you're going to grab your eye cream. I'm using this one by Skin Longevity. You're going to use a tiny amount, just about half the pea size, and you're going to tap it under both of the eyes. If you have a little bit of puffiness under your eyes, then you can apply either an eye cream that's designed for puffy eyes, or you can use a little eye patch. And if you've never tried these before, they're really, really neat. So they're a little... There's two of them there, so they're real slick. So these just go under the eyes. They stay there for 10 minutes, and then you remove them. You can pat that gel that's left behind just in and allow it to dry. These are actually Snoxin 2 under eye patches for fine lines, puffiness, and dark circles. And so the way these work is over time, your skin will actually get a little bit better. Now, if you've got giant eye bags or extreme puffiness, they're not going to take all that puffiness away. So let's just be realistic. They are going to help a little bit. After the eye cream or treatment, you're going to apply your moisturizer all over your face and allow it to dry. Very important 
to let everything that you put on your face dry down before you add something else to it. Next up, we're always doing the sunscreen. We're always doing the sunscreen because we're protecting not just from burning, but we're protecting from the UVA rays. And the UVA rays are the aging rays. The UVB rays are the burning rays. So you can remember that the A is for aging and the B is for burning. Those UVA rays are really tricky because they can bounce off of things and bounce onto your face and cause aging where you might not think that you have to wear sunscreen because you're just gonna be in the shade. That may not be completely true. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply my sunscreen. Whoops, this is my favorite. It's a clear sunscreen. I talk about this all the time because it's my favorite. And it's just gonna go all over. It's very lightweight. I can apply this directly to my eyelids without it running in, it's sweating in, it's sweat proof waterproof formula and yes I come right up under my eyes. Once that's dry we're going to apply foundation. Now foundation is not going to go underneath the eyes period. We're going to avoid under eyes and above eyes. Now, before we go on to concealer, because I like to always do that last, we're going to tackle the problem of running eye makeup. The first thing we're going to do is apply an eyeshadow primer. Eyeshadow primers hold our makeup in place and prevent it from creasing. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of powdered eyeshadow, and then we're going to tackle eyeliner. There are a couple of really great ways to keep eyeliner in place without budging. The first is to replace your eyeliner with a cream shadow stick. I'm using the Caviar Stick by Laura Mercier. These are waterproof, sweatproof. They're not going anywhere. You can apply them just like an eyeliner above the eye and below the eye. Or like I'm doing, you can kind of smudge it out and make it into a smoky look. If the Caviar Sticks are not in your budget, then try the ones by Julep or the ones by e.l.f. Just make sure that it says waterproof or water resistant on it. Now let's go on to the second part of this problem, which is smudging mascara. My mascara used to be a hot mess until I learned about tubing mascaras. Tubing mascaras are much like traditional mascaras that coat the lashes with oil-based pigments. Tubing mascaras coat the lashes with little tiny tubes, and once they're dry, they don't smudge or smear no matter if you have really oily skin or not. And what's even more interesting is that to remove them, you simply use warm water and a washcloth. There are several different ones on the market. The one that I'm using right now is by Prime Prometics. I like this one because it doesn't bother my eyes. It's ophthalmologist tested, pH balanced, and cruelty free. But it's definitely not the only tubing mascara out there. And I've already put some of my other favorites in that view products button, so check that out. Now that we've got that done, we're going to do concealer. And I want you to start with a clean brush, completely clean. I'm actually using an eyeshadow brush. The important thing here is that it's kind of dense, but it's also very soft. So if you have a kitten's paw concealer brush or a soft concealer brush, use that. Whatever concealer you choose, just make sure it says it's a non-creasing concealer. I'm gonna use the non-creasing one by Jean Iredale. So we're gonna take a little bit and we're just gonna place it someplace where we can dip our brush in. Then you're going to get setting spray. Even if you have to go buy setting spray, you're gonna get the best setting spray you can afford. I would much rather you had a really good quality setting spray and a less quality makeup than a higher quality makeup and a lower quality setting spray because a good quality setting spray can make so many different types of makeup work really well. I'm using my all-time favorite Scandinavia setting spray. It is the best, but if it's not in your budget, just buy whatever you can that's the best quality. We're going to spray the brush with the setting spray, then we're going to dip the setting spray brush into the concealer. 
we're going to use the tiniest amount of concealer. And what the setting spray will do is two things. It's going to thin out the concealer a little bit, making it more spreadable. And then it's also going to seal it in place and hold it there for much longer. I'm just working the concealer and the setting spray together a little bit and making sure that my brush is coated, but definitely not saturated. Now, even though I am having a love affair with a couple of very high-end concealers, this can be done with pretty much any liquid concealer. In fact, when I first came up with this idea to apply concealer this way, I was actually using very inexpensive concealer and also very inexpensive setting spray. The last thing I want you to think, because it's not the truth, is that you have to have a bunch of money to make your makeup look good. Now that I've got that tapped into where I want it, it's still moist and I'm going to use my ring finger to gently blend this out. This is almost like the same concept of blotting your lips to make the color stay behind and last longer. Using the dry finger is like blotting the liquid out and leaving the pigment behind. Now you can see that that is very skin-like. It's on very lightly. But the great thing about concealer is that it has a lot of pigment in it. So you can actually thin it out and still get a really nice coverage. And if you have to pat any more in, just dab it in where you need it. That looks pretty amazing. Now let's do the other side. Hopefully I've made this look very simple. It really is very simple, but there's some interesting things that you need to know about setting spray. Setting spray actually holds your makeup in place, but it can actually remove makeup as well. So you want to be careful if you didn't get enough coverage the first time, you want to really be careful not to go back in and use paint strokes to try and blend again, because it's just going to be a mess and you're going to have to start all over. Now, I like to let that sit for two or three minutes and just make sure that nothing's going to crease. And then if anything looks creasy, I'll just go in with the same brush that I used, nothing extra on it, and just give it a little smooth out. But I can tell you nothing under there is creasing. And it's been about four minutes now. Now that I've shown you how to apply the makeup so that it won't run or crease, let me show you how you can keep it in place all day and all night. You guessed it, you're going to use your setting spray and you're going to mist your entire face. This is going to do a couple of things. First, it's going to take the layers of makeup that we have on and it's going to fuse them together, making them look like one layer. And the exciting part is it's going to hold your makeup in place all day and all night. It doesn't matter if you're roller skating, you're dancing, walking on the beach, riding a bike. Or even if the kids accidentally splash you at the pool. Give me a thumbs up if this helped you and let me know what you think in the comments.